The world's largest and most powerful space telescope has revealed unprecedented views of Jupiter. The James Webb Telescope took the pictures of the solar system's biggest planet in July. And the images show the storms, moons and rings surrounding Jupiter in detail that astronomers have described as incredible. So let's join now Caroline Harper, who is the head of space science at the UK Space Agency. She joins me from Swindon in South East England. Caroline, when I saw these images, I thought how stunning they were. But I wonder for you, when this is your passion, what your reaction was when you saw these incredible pictures from Jupiter, of Jupiter. Hi, Lucy. Well, they're beautiful, aren't they? Um, they're not just scientifically incredibly interesting, that they're fantastic to look at. Uh, it, it's just unprecedented, the, the level of detail and the clarity uh, of these images uh, compared with what we've had before. Is there a sense of surprise then, Caroline, at just how good these pictures are? I think so, yes. I think, to be honest, it's fair to say some of these images have pretty much knocked the socks off some of the scientists. Um, they're all saying uh, James Webb is performing even better than expected, which is, is brilliant news. Tell us what we're seeing, Caroline, when we see these sort of close-up, detailed pictures of Jupiter. What's been revealed? Well, so, so what we're looking at is um, composite images taken with one of the instruments on James Webb, the, the NIRCAM instrument. Um, and what we're looking at has been artificially coloured because James Webb uses infrared light to, to observe the universe and, and in this case to observe, uh, observe Jupiter. Um, so it's been artificially coloured. Um, and if, if you look at the images that, that we can see that, that, that the sort of the white areas uh, are areas that are reflecting a lot of light. So probably the tops of high clouds. So you will see the, the famous red spot on Jupiter, which no. in these images looks white. So that's it's we're, reflecting we're just a lot of light. Sorry to interrupt you, Caroline. That's what we're seeing now. We just saw that image. This, this is the great red spot. Now it's famous, the storm. Is it right it's so big it could swallow Earth? That's correct, yes. Yes, it is. Jupiter is much bigger than Earth, and, and, and the, the diameter of that storm, yes, it could swallow Earth. What are your expectations now of the telescope? Because it keeps delivering. What next? Well, um, uh, so James Webb was originally um, conceived to uh, look far back in time at the earliest stars to, to see the, the faint light that comes from the very first stars in the universe as they were forming. Um, and you need infrared light to be able to see uh, the, the, the light from these, these stars because uh, the universe is expanding. So as the light travels a long distance, it gets stretched into longer wavelengths, which sit in the infrared spectrum. So you need a, a telescope like James Webb to be able to capture that really faint infrared light from the earliest stars in the universe. So this is really looking back much further in time than we've been able to do before to the earliest stars. And the other thing about James Webb is um, the infrared light lets it peer inside dust clouds that always surround star nurseries and baby planets forming. There's always a lot of thick dust. And the, the Hubble Space Telescope, which has been sending back amazing images for the past 30 years, uh, it's brilliant, but it uses visible light, and that has its limitations. Uh, it can't see through these dust clouds, and James Webb can. That's so exciting, Caroline, and thank you so much for explaining all of that so clearly to us and with such great passion. We can't wait to see what the telescope, the James Webb Space Telescope, delivers next.